Good morning. It's the morning high five. We are back. It's August. Uh, we took a little hiatus, but we're back now. We are starting the book of Judges. So we're going to go through the book of Judges, just like we did. We went through Deuteronomy. We went through Joshua. Now we're going to continue that same story, continue the same, the history of Israel going from slavery to the promised land. Now their experience in the promised land. Um, so we're going to look at chapter one today, all, what is it, 36 verses. I'll give you the summary of it, the quick, dirty version. So it, it kind of retells the story from the last part of Joshua, where Joshua is still alive and the the people have their inheritance, they have their different allotments of territory, and it's on them to finish the job of getting rid of all of the, the people, the Canaanites, all the different people that were already there that God said needed to be taken out. It was each tribe's job to take out the people in their territory. And so in Judges, the first chapter, we see some tribes started the job, but if, if you read through it, every single tribe failed to complete the job. If you, as you're reading it, you'll read, well, they fought against the people, they were victorious, but they still left some people in this little pocket. And they took over most of their territory, but this one city still had some of the Canaanites. They still had some of the Amorites. They still had some of the Jebusites. They did not complete the job that God gave them to do, which was to drive all those people out. Um, and that's, that's really the, the short version. It just goes from tribe to tribe. They fought. Some of them didn't fight. They just, the, the people decided they would serve them. They would force them to be their forced labor, their slaves, but they did not drive them out. And they failed. In the ESV Bible at the beginning of, uh, before verse 27, it says, failure to complete the conquest. They failed. And so that's what we're talking about this morning. That is chapter one. You want to start this off, Rich? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in, in reading this, kind of like you, you brought out, um, you just, you see uh, Israel was tasked with a job, with instruction from God as to, you know, conquer the land and kill everybody in the land. Um, and so it, it reading this, it, for me, it was kind of sad because you see like over and over the, the wording that's used is Israel failed to drive out. Like they failed to drive out. Like they did, they, you know, went in and got the land, but failed to drive out. And it's just like, ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, like just <laughs> do it you know um but it, it's not to it's not to to judge the people of israel um i don't know if you caught that because we're in judges but it, it's not to judge them but <laughs> it, it's it's to understand like what it almost seems like they try to prioritize what god had gave them and what the instructions god had given them like, so God told them to, you know, go into the land, conquer the land. And then God told them to, you know, kill everybody in the land to get rid of the people. And it seems like in their mind, they're like, okay, so I think the most important thing is the land. So let's just make sure we get the land. And then the people, like, we'll, we'll deal with them. Like, once we get the land, like, the, we'll be good because that's the main thing. And, and it seems like that's kind of their focus that they did get the land, 
but they did they didn't do the the full instructions that were given to them which was to kill all the people um god didn't want the people of canaanite around like yes the land is yours but i also don't want the people there and it's like in their mind because god didn't specifically say why he didn't want the people there like almost israel didn't feel like it's not that important as long as we get the land that's the most important that's the promise because the promised land that's the land that, that god wants to give us so we need to get the land um the people they're, we, they're not what the, once we defeat them like they're they're nothing you know and and that's just we cannot reprioritize or restructure the instructions that god has given us we can't put our own self-value on things and say that this means more than this um, kind of like we do with you know like sin like god says sin is sin but in our minds uh, nah, this sin is a little more than, than this down <laughs> here you know um, right. but we cannot like repire restructure what god has given us um, and that that seems like that's kind of what they did because over and over, like I say, you just keep reading. They failed to drive out. They failed to drive out. And then it it also kind of follows that up with a lot of times it says like to this day, like they're dealing with that issue. And I'm not sure if yeah. that's like current today, but as the day the Bible was written, they were still dealing with that issue of the Canaanites, of the people of Canaanites. Is it like to this day, they're still living with some of the people. Although they were slaves, you know, they, they thought they, you know, had conquered them and they were made them slaves and that they would never get back to a place where their, you know, current status, like together, it says to this day, they are dealing with some of these issues and some of these problems that they didn't take care of back then. Like at a time when they were supposed to wipe something out, kill it, get rid of it, to this day, they're still dealing with it it still has an effect on their life. And that's just, you know, we have to carry out and follow all of the instructions of God. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, great point. And just real quick, we were just talking in discipleship, Ecclesiastes chapter three, there is a season for everything, a time for everything. And God is the one who directs the time and directs the season. And for Israel in this season, it was the time to kill. And I know that sounds harsh. It sounds harsh even to this day. That may be why they didn't really follow through because it just, God, like everybody, God, that just, you know, we'll make them work for us, but we don't have to kill everybody. Right. Um, but this was that time. That was the command from God. And because they failed to do it, as we keep reading through Judges, we will see the fallout. We'll see the we'll see what happens when God says something is necessary and we think it's optional. We we yeah. think uh if we don't have to do that. We'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> um and then the the one Kind of point I, I was looking at in chapter one is how it, again, it recaps that when Joshua was alive, the people really, they, they, they kind of tried to do what was right. They thought they were strong. They thought that they, they were mostly obedient while Joshua was alive, mostly obedient that I, that's a phrase I more than likely will come back to, <laughs> mostly obedient. But we have to see and recognize mostly obedient still gets you into trouble. Yeah. Once, once Joshua is gone, even the mostly obedient falls apart. Now they're not even mostly obedient. They just, they go straight to, yeah, we'll, we'll do what, what we feel like doing, really. Mm -hmm. But it, I think even that is a message. It's a, a word of caution for us. Sometimes we think we are strong because we're around strong people. We're under strong leadership. But mm -hmm. God really, the, the challenge is and the, the question is, are you really strong? Because the leader may not always be there. 
the person that you lean on may not always be there. Richard and I were talking and you see it a lot in families when the the mother, the grandmother, grandfather, father passes away, a lot of the times families will splinter and they the family always thought it was close. It thought it was it was strong and tight. But it was that person who was strong and kept a lot of <laughs> a lot of mess down and kept a lot of people speaking to each other. And as soon as that person is gone, everyone is, oh, I'm not talking to you no more. I don't have to deal with you no more. <laughs> and right. and you see chaos. And you're like, where was all this while the leader was, you know, when the when the strong person was alive, where how did all how did they fall apart so quickly? Yeah. Mostly obedient. Most a lot of people are riding the coattails of strong people, thinking that they are strong. And then a situation, God will allow a situation to arise to only to show you you were you were never as strong as you thought you were. You were just around strong people. And so the challenge for us as disciples, and speaking of disciples, you see the same thing with Jesus. His disciples thought they were strong. So Jesus was arrested. Then they went into hiding, like, yeah, I. This is more than I signed up for. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get on track. The idea, though, for us, for us, you and I, those of you watching, Richard, myself, our challenge is make sure we are actually strong. Make sure we are actually um, fully obedient, not just mostly obedient, not just good enough obedient, not just obedient to the parts that make sense to me. We're supposed yeah. to be all the way obedient, all the way, all the way in, all our our chips in the middle of the table, all in, not, well, in case I don't win this hand, <laughs> I still have chips. <laughs> like, all in, all the way obedient, not just mostly obedient. And again, like I said, we'll come back to that concept because the book of Judges, is the everything all the rest of these chapters are the fallout from the decisions made at the end of joshua and the beginning the, this first chapter of judges their decision their choice because it wasn't a matter of they couldn't drive out the people they chose not to right. that's why it's when we say it's a failure it's it's extra bad because they had the power to do it yeah. If you could defeat the people on a large scale, you could very easily defeat the, the little small pockets that remain, yeah. but it just didn't seem like a priority. It didn't seem necessary. So they didn't do it. And the rest of this book, <laughs> and, and truly, like Richard says, if you read how it's written, the rest of their history is colored by these decisions of not doing not not completing the task that God gave them to do. So, yeah, yeah, no, um, it, yeah, it, it's just, um, yeah, that as just you know when God gives instruction, I almost kind of thought about it and looked at it like. Um, in school, there is like a way that you can set up your classes to receive a grade as being pass or fail. Right. And basically, right. if it's over a certain percentage, like if you get a 70 percent or more, then you you get a passing grade. Anything right. under 70 percent is an automatic failing grade. No matter how right. close it is to 70, it's a failing grade. <laughs> Right. Really? Um, right. And so with God, he works on a pass fail system. So but his his, his scale is a little different. It's a hundred percent, and anything less than a hundred is an automatic fail. So right. even if you do ninety-nine point eight or ninety-nine point nine percent of the job or the instructions or follow that, like it, if it's not a hundred percent, like you fail to do what God has asked you to do. And there are consequences right. for that failure. And, and it's just like, 
Israel, I, I believe in their mind, like they thought that they were following God's instructions. They thought like, okay, we got the land. We're good. We, we killed most of the people. The ones that are left are not going to bother us. They're not going to affect us. We did what God asked us to do. And they probably celebrated like, yeah, you know, we did it. Like not understanding that they actually failed, you know, to do what God right. has told them to do. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, the the last thing that I that I saw in here, and, and it's it's not really like a a point point, but it's I, I think it, if you because <laughs> I never read read this like in the Bible before, and I think it, it's like funny, but I think it's also mm -hmm. like just kind of sparks you to read a little more to see some of these things. But like verse six, like they one of the kings they went in and they like where they captured the people of the city and the king got away, he escaped. But then they found him and it says they cut off his thumbs and they cut off his, his big toe, uh, his big toes. And I was like, what? <laughs> and, and yeah, so they, they cut off both his thumbs and then they cut off his big toes. And I'm like, that's, that's interesting. Um, but then it says that he, he used to do that to kings when he captured them. He used to cut off their thumbs and cut off their their big toes, and yeah, it, it, I don't know. It's just funny, it's interesting. But then, like he says it, like now God is repaying him for what he did to all the other kings, and then they eventually kill him. But just to catch somebody, cut off their thumbs and their big toes, it was just funny to read. I just, you guys should read. Um, it, it's in there. Uh, all right. But yeah. But and there's. There's a bunch of stories like this in the book of Judges. Like Judges is a it's it's a very animated <laughs> descriptive book because a lot happens in Judges. There's it's a very strange time in Israel. <laughs> but yeah, definitely I, I agree. And and again, I we mentioned it during discipleship. I'll mention it again here for the morning high five. Our goal, our aim, our mission is not to, to for you to just watch and hear what we think. Our goal, our mission, our aim is to inspire you to read for yourself and see what you think. Because God wants to speak to you, not just through us, not just through what we see, but he wants to speak to you directly. So if you were watching this, it, you know, we, it is, it's always nice for people. Oh, you know, we really appreciate it and we, you guys are awesome. That's, that's really nice. But if, if it doesn't inspire you to read, then we haven't hit our mark. We, we would consider ourselves, we haven't passed yet. We're, we're right. still, uh, 70%. We had, we're, I don't want to say we're failing, but in, in our mind, in my mind, it, I haven't, I haven't passed if I'm not inspiring those of you who are watching to read for yourself. If all you're doing is looking at us going, oh man, Eric, you're, you're killing it. That's awesome. Thanks. But just know in my mind, I failed. Yeah. The goal is to inspire you. So Having said that, next week, if God says the same, we'll be back with Judges chapter two. Again, the spoiler alert, it gets very interesting. <laughs> Story, it picks up real quick. We know there's not a lot of downtime, not a lot of, there's a lot of action in the book of Judges. So yeah, I encourage you, please read ahead and let it speak to you. God wants to use his word to speak to you. Let it happen. Yeah. Don't just have, you know, speaking to us. He wants to speak to you too. Yeah. Anything else, Rich? That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you for joining us for another morning high five. We're back. Are you excited? Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, not you. I know you're excited. I met the people and see if they was going to Join us with hearts and <laughs> oh, yeah, they they're gonna they're gonna fill up the chat today. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. Today is the day. They're yeah, they go going they crazy in the chat. Okay. 
Richard, don't let Richard down. He said, you're going to go crazy in the chat. We want to see it. Okay. All right. All right. Have a great rest of your Monday.